In the beginning, Jesus Christ created the earth under Heavenly Father's direction and declared that it was good. At one time during its creation, our beautiful world was without form and void, empty and desolate. But Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ commanded unorganized materials and elements to obey their every word and turn them into the wonderful earth that we live on. Just as a caterpillar is transformed into a beautiful butterfly, completely different from what it started out as, our loving creators can take our unorganized and chaotic lives and transform us into the beautiful, exalted, and glorified creations we are destined to be. We need to trust and have faith that they can shine light in the dark moments in our lives, help us change whatever we need to, and give us a solid foundation to build upon to return and live with them as celestial beings. As we learn more about His creations, we develop gratitude and appreciation for all He gives us to enjoy on this earth and are able to grow and be more like Him each day. God told us the purpose of His creation, work, and glory is to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. We needed the opportunity to live on this earth with physical bodies to learn the lessons of mortality to be able to return and live with Him. The creation accounts we read in the book of Genesis in the Bible and the books of Moses and Abraham in the Pearl of Great Price each give us different insights into the creation process. The Hebrew word for creation means to form, shape, or organize out of pre-existing material or matter, and God was involved in every part of this process of creating the heavens and the earth for us to live on and participate in His plan of salvation. The creation began with a void or empty space that God gave form to. He caused darkness to come upon the face of the deep that was in chaos, and His Spirit moved upon the face of the water to create order. God said, Let there be light, and it was good. He divided the light that He called day from the darkness that He called night, by the word of His power, or Jesus Christ. And the evening and morning were the first day. We read in Genesis and Moses that this creation happened over periods of time called days, and in Abraham it was called times. We really don't know how long each of these creation periods were, just that they were separate events that divided each process. So now there was a separation from day and night and light and darkness. The sun filled the day and the moon and stars filled the night. God had separated the waters of the deep from the sky or firmament in the heavens and caused dry land to appear that he filled with plants and trees. In the next three creations, he filled the earth with life, such as fish and other creatures in the sea, birds in the sky, and animals and all creeping things on the land. After each creation, God said it was good, and it is interesting to read in Abraham that God watched each creation to make sure it obeyed his command and actually was good. Having finished the first five days of creation, the earth was now prepared for its most important creation and set apart from the others. In a very special separate creation, God created Adam in his own image and likeness and put him into the Garden of Eden. Adam was commanded to take care of the garden, give names to all the creatures in it, and to not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God said that it was not good for a man to be alone, and Eve was then created as Adam's helpmeet, which in Hebrew suggests an equal companion with power to help save or rescue someone. By themselves, neither male or female spirits could fulfill the purposes of their creation, but together they complete and perfect each other in Heavenly Father's plan of happiness. So God now joined Adam and Eve together in a marriage as a man and woman for time and all eternity by the power of the priesthood. He gave them dominion or power and responsibility over the earth and all its creations and told them to exercise it righteously and protect, care for, and nurture them. Adam and Eve were told to multiply and replenish the earth and have joy with their families. Our creation was God's greatest achievement, and knowing that we are all created in His own image and likeness helps us to understand how much He loves and wants the very best for each of us. The world sends us many false messages about our bodies, 
But when we understand that Heavenly Father created them to look like His own body, and that they are a precious gift for us to learn how to control and take care of, we can learn how to grow to become like Him, develop reverence for them, and learn how to respect and take care of our own and others' bodies to show Him our gratitude for them. After completing the six creative days or times, God then rested on the seventh day, called the Sabbath. He made it a holy day and blessed and sanctified it as a sacred time for us to worship Him and receive and remember His great promises to us. We should set this day apart from the other six days to rest from our daily labors and set aside the things we normally do during the rest of the week. The Sabbath is a sacred and holy day to be spent in worship and reverence. We can free our minds to ponder and feed our souls the things of the Spirit and renew our covenants with the Lord. And these are Genesis chapters 1 through 2 in the Old Testament, and Moses chapters 2 and 3, and Abraham 4 and 5 in the Pearl of Great Price. Look for hidden images located throughout the video. You can download a coloring page and activity puzzles for each section on Etsy at PonderFun. Visit our Facebook page or PonderFun.com to find more fun things to do, and you can listen to these as a podcast. Please like and share these videos with anyone you think might enjoy them, and I'll keep making new ones. Thanks again for watching, and find some time this week to ponder.